Good evening. Bonsoir. Dobry večer. Je suis très heureuse que nous soyons ici. Toronto a une communauté ukrainienne remarquable et c'est un jour incroyablement important pour toutes les Canadiennes et Canadiens d'une nation à l'autre. Je vous remercie tous d'être ici aujourd'hui et de votre soutien indévectible pour le courageux peuple ukrainien. Governing is hard. It requires compromise and a balancing of competing legitimate interests that is usually painful and sometimes feels impossible. Decisions are often a 51-49 call and about choosing between different shades of gray. But every once in a while, a leader faces a black and white choice, a choice of utter moral clarity. And sometimes, accustomed as we are to operating in a world of ambiguity, leaders of democracies can be slow to see that the issue before them is indeed a clear-cut contest between right and wrong. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is such a contest. It is today's great fight between light and darkness. One of the leaders who understood that soonest and who has been most resolute is our Prime Minister, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. A few days after Putin's tanks rolled across the Ukrainian border, I was in a meeting with the Prime Minister. Now, that was a time when Russian assassins were roaming the streets of Kyiv and the threat to the lives of Ukraine's leaders seemed immediate. They often, at the beginning of meetings, Ukraine's leaders said, I hope you'll see me tomorrow. Around the world, the expert consensus was that the Ukrainian capital would fall in weeks, if not days. But in that candid and private discussion, our Prime Minister had total certainty about what would happen. Ukraine would never give up, he said. We would see the same invincible determination from the people of Ukraine as the British had displayed during the Blitz when Hitler's bombers rained death from the sky. He said, and this was just a couple of weeks after the war started, that Ukraine would hold the line, that Ukraine would fight back, and that Ukraine would win. And he was right. <laughs> because as I think all of us now recognize, as all of the people of Canada recognize, as all of the people of the free world recognize, this is a war where the stakes are black and white. This is a fight between good and evil. And that is why the Prime Minister committed then, right at the beginning, that Canada would never waver. And that is why we are even more resolute now, after 575 long, long days of brutal fighting. 
We know that Ukraine can and must and will win this war. Mais aujourd'hui, alors que la guerre s'éternise et que de nouveaux Ukrainiens meurent chaque jour, certaines voix se fatiguent et faiblissent. Ce voix, étonnamment et admirablement, ne sont pas en Ukraine. Ce sont les Ukrainiens qui sont tués et torturés. Ce sont les femmes ukrainiennes qui sont violées. Ce sont les enfants ukrainiens qui sont kidnappés par le régime criminel de Poutine. Et pourtant, c'est dans des démocraties pacifiques, loin des lignes de front, que certains se demandent si la démocratie ukrainienne est assez importante, si ce combat vaut la peine d'être mené à des coups qui sont définitivement importante. Aujourd'hui, ce soir, le Canada a l'occasion de dire au peuple ukrainien et à son remarquable leader que nous ne les abandonnerons jamais. Today is an opportunity for us, the people of Canada, represented by the amazing Canadians gathered here tonight, to say to the brave people of Ukraine, through their remarkable leader and his amazing wife, Olena, who is here with us too. Tonight is our night to say to them, we will keep the faith. We will never abandon you. Our determination is absolute. Now, one of my favorite poems is written by a Ukrainian poet called Ivan Franko. It's called To the Great Moment, Do Velikoho Momento. When President Volodymyr Zelensky made his first visit to Canada, to Toronto, in July of 2019, shortly after his election, I quoted a passage from that poem while introducing him. Here's that passage. Do velikoho momentu buď hotovi kožen z vas. Kožen može stať Bogdanom, jak nastane slušnej čas. I'm going to translate freely here. This is my own translation, not a literary one. Let every one of you be ready for the great moment. Each one of us can be the decisive leader when the consequential moment comes. We did not know then, in the summer of 2019, when that consequential moment would arrive, or quite how consequential it would be. But in the bloody trenches dug into its famous black earth, and in the war-torn streets of its proud and beautiful cities, Ukraine is today facing that most consequential of moments, that Veliky moment. And under President Zelensky's decisive leadership, millions upon millions upon millions of Ukrainians have proven themselves worthy of that moment. But this fight, the fight for democracy, must also be Canada's moment. Our Prime Minister recognized that from the very beginning. In the conversation I recounted, and in meeting after meeting 
where I have watched him rallying the world to support Ukraine, our Prime Minister has proven himself ready for our great moment. And in so doing, he has allowed all of us as Canadians to show ourselves as a country to be ready for that great moment. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, Shanovni Pane Panove, it's a huge honor for me to welcome the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau. Bonsoir, mes amis. Thank you, Christia, for your words uh, and for the incredible work uh, that you've done day in and day out uh, to you know, direct our country in the right way, but also uh, to make sure that we are standing up unequivocally for Ukraine every single day. Yeah, big round of applause for Christia. Before I begin, I know a lot of people have seen the tragic news out of Coquitlam today. I want to offer my condolences to the family of the RCMP officer who lost their life and to the two officers who were injured. We are all wishing you a fast and full recovery. We will continue to follow the situation closely. It is so great to be here with you all tonight to welcome President Volodymyr Zelensky and the First Lady of Ukraine, Olena Zelenska. It is so great to see so many of you here come from across the country to celebrate this moment of solidarity. I do want to recognize all the extraordinary dignitaries in the, uh, in the front row here. First of all, uh, Premier Ford, uh, Doug, it's great to see you here. Thank you for standing so strong in Ukraine. Mayor Olivia Chow, thank you very much for standing up for Ukraine. I like the yellow and blue. It's very uh, uh, appropriate. Other mayors, officials, ministers, members of parliament, members of the Canadian Armed Forces who are welcoming us uh, here to their hall. It is so good to see all of you, but it is mostly so good to see so many strong Ukrainian Canadians here to stand for Ukraine. Le soutien que fournit le Canada provient de tous les ordres de gouvernement, des groupes communautaires et bien sûr de la diaspora. Le Canada en entier est solidaire de l'Ukraine. Canadian support comes from all orders of government, from community groups, from the diaspora. All of Canada is united behind Ukraine. Now, I know that here with us tonight is a very special group. Some of the folks that I visited last February from St. Demetrius' school. Yeah, there you are in the back. Now, St. Demetrius here in Toronto has welcomed more than 100 Ukrainian children to their classes. Fellow students and teachers have collected books, clothes, and food to give to their new friends and neighbors. And they are extraordinary, and they are wonderful, and we need to give them a big round of applause. But what's great about them is that they're actually not unique. There are schools like that, and communities like that, right across the country, opening up their homes, their hearts, their communities uh, to people fleeing, horrific situations, showing the support, love, the solidarity that Canada is so known for. Ça me fait chaud au cœur de voir les gens aider les Ukrainiens dans nos écoles et nos centres communautaires partout au pays. Canadians have a reputation around the world for being welcoming, friendly, open, 
thank you for demonstrating every single day that that is absolutely the case. You see, bullets and bombs can do a lot of damage, but one thing they can never take away is your sense of community. I've seen this sense of community when I visited Kviv, even in times of war, and I'm seeing it here in Canada every day. See, Canadians and Ukrainians have shared a special bond for a long time. Over the past generation, so many Canadians of Ukrainian origin have helped build our country. And as I've said before, it is right as rain, therefore, that it be Canada and Canadians who will be there helping Ukraine rebuild for future generations. But for now, Canada stands with Ukraine. And we do so in an absolutely unequivocal fashion. We do so, yes, because of the deep ties and friendships that have bonded our countries and our peoples for so long. The contributions of Ukrainian Canadians that have made this country what it is today the deep connections and family ties that still exist, the alignments and values as countries that believe in each other. We are good friends as countries. But that's not the only reason why we stand so solidly with Ukraine. We stand with Ukraine because it is the right thing to do. I don't have to tell anyone here tonight that the world is a particularly challenging place these days. Whether it's the increasing impacts of extreme weather events from climate change, whether it's the continued hangover from the pandemic, whether it's the challenges uh, around the cost of living and interest rates and grocery prices and fuel prices that are exacerbated by Russia's illegal invasion of a sovereign nation, there are real challenges in the world right now. And Canadians face a choice, like everyone around the world. When the tough times come, the natural human instinct is to hunker down and hope the storm blows past. But that's not what Canadians do. That's not who we are. I saw it throughout the summer as I visited corners of this country hit by wildfires, some that had rarely, if ever, been hit by wildfires before. Every single place where you were seeing devastation and lost, you, loss, you also saw Canadians stepping up for each other, knowing that the well-being of our neighbors of our entire country, of our communities, matters to each of our well-beings. It's how we're hardwired as Canadians to look out for each other, to support each other. And one of the things we've learned over the past few years is that everything is interconnected. What happens on the other side of the world does impact us directly. And one of the things we know more than anything else is we all have a role to play in making sure that the world we are building for our kids and grandkids is better in every way. But if I'm going to be honest, it's challenging sometimes to see that. There is so much hardship and chaos all around us shifting geopolitical realities, backsliding democracies, challenges to the rules and the peace and the stability that we've seen for 75 years in this world that has contributed to so much prosperity and growth and opportunities for so many has been upended because Vladimir Putin decided that he wanted to invade a neighboring peaceful nation. He put an end to 
decades of prosperity, of stability, is trying to overthrow the rules-based order and make might right once again. We need to continue to stand strong against that kind of thinking. And it's not just for Ukraine, it's for all of us. Canadians know this is a question of right or wrong. Canadians know that, yes, it is incredibly hard for Ukraine to continue to stand against a Russian aggression. And let's be honest, it's hard for the democracies around the world who are there to support their citizens, who are investing for the future, who are challenged with a challenging economy around the world to continue to step up as Canada has with close to $9 billion in aid for Ukraine. But we will because the cost on Canadians, on our lives, on our world will be so much greater if Putin wins this war that we will and have to stand every single day until Ukraine wins this war. The stakes, the stakes are high for Canadians. The stakes are high for Ukrainians. The stakes are high for all of us around the world. This is a moment where we define ourselves for the rest of the 21st century. Did we stand up against authoritarianism? Did we stand up against those who choose to break the rules around the world? Do we stand up for what is right? We are Canadian. Of course we're going to stand up for what's right. And even more so for Canadians of Ukrainian origin. And not just because of your ties to that beautiful country, but because the strength and the courage of the Ukrainian people is well known to all of us who have friends, who know community members, who've seen the extraordinary heart and spirit of Ukrainians. For over a hundred years, you have helped contribute to shaping this country, settling the prairies, building extraordinary communities and cities, contributing in arts, in culture, in science, in business, in so many ways to building this great country. All Canadians, not just Ukrainian Canadians, all Canadians know how fierce and strong and steadfast the people of Ukraine are, and that is why we know you will win this war. But you know, we Canadians are lucky to know so many Ukrainians around us. But the world has gotten to know over the past year and a half one Ukrainian in particular. Someone who has stood up to Putin, stared him in the face every day and stayed strong. Someone who has inspired a nation and a world. We look to Volodymyr Zelensky for his leadership, for his steadfastness, for his commitment, for his strength, and it is an inspiration to us all, not just to Ukrainians who continue to fight for their lives and their future, but for all of us around the world who understand what is at stake when we see him, when we hear from him, when we understand the passion and the leadership he shows, he will stand for what is right every single way, and he will demand the very best, not just of all Ukrainians, not even just of all Canadians, but of everyone around the world who is committed to building that better world. Vladimir, as you approach to come out, you know, in my many conversations with you over the past year and a half, I've mentioned the unwavering support 
that Canada and Canadians have for you and for Ukraine. Well, tonight, you get to feel just a little bit of that love and support as we welcome you here to show you that as you are still standing for Ukraine, Canada and all Canadians stand with you for as much as it takes, for as long as it takes. Mesdames et Messieurs, c'est mon grand plaisir de vous présenter Volodymyr Zelensky, le président de l'Ukraine. Slava Ukraini! Слава Украине! Все эти области нашим воинам! Слава Украине! I'm so proud to hear it in Canada. This wars unite whole Canada, all the people all communities, all cities. Slava Ukraini! And this is how unity, how unity sounds. And I'm proud that we achieved unity like this. And it's so inspiring. And it's not just inspiring, it helps others. It helps us, helps us all to become stronger. And we are stronger. <laughs> to become stronger and our freedom to get stronger and it moves our unity to victory. Ukraine's victory, Canada's victory, people's victory. До нашої спільної перемоги. The victory will be ours, and I have no doubt. And I hear, no, I don't hear. The victory will be ours. Yeah. Yeah, I hear, yeah, great. Now I hear. Now I hear you have no doubt. And I'm so, um, 
I'm, I'm happy to be here with my wife. And first lady. Three days together. <laughs> the first time from the beginning of full-scale war. Thank you, Justin. Uh, to be serious, uh, I'm so proud that Ukraine inspires, really, that Ukrainians inspire, and so do Canadian Ukrainians. Thank you. And I thank you all, all of you, that you are active. You let others feel Ukraine's vibe, the vibe of Slava Ukraini. The vibe of people who never surrender. We bring Ukrainian culture, Ukrainian dream, dream for the fact that we have, dream for independence when Ukraine still has not lost its independence. And I thank your grandfathers, and I thank your grandmothers who saved Ukrainian identity who contributed to making Canada a great country. І ви допомагаєте берегти Україну зараз. Це дуже важливо зараз, коли ми захищаємо і обов'язково обов'язково захистимо нашу незалежність. Ви допомагаєте, допомагаєте волонтерам, ви прийняли наших людей. Canada trains our guys, our soldiers, our warriors. Canada gives weapons to Ukraine to move forward, to push back Russia. And I thank you for this. Thank you all. And I'm sure Canada will never lose Ukrainian wipe. And the day will come when we gather at a similar place, similar place in Ukraine. Many people, many people, millions, cheering crowd, blue and yellow flags, and maple leaf Flex. And the whole Ukraine will say thank you. Дякую. Дякую тобі, Канадо. Слава Україні. Thank you, Justin. Teresa, thank you.